going back to the time of uh, 2020, the time of the pandemic and the 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 uh, virus and the earth and all those things. This passage I'm going to share with you today comes from the book of First Kings chapter 18, and it's the story of Elijah. And and most of you know this story. You know the story where Elijah called down he- a fire from heaven. And uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but I'm, I'm just going to read a few of these verses and talk about it. And I'm going to share with you what I believe God is saying. It says, Any, And call ye on the name of your gods. Oh, let me back up just a little bit. So verse 21, it says, And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, Not a word. Nobody said anything. And then, uh, if I'm going to skip down to verse 24. And, you know, he, he, he had the prophets of Baal there. And he says, look, you got, you know, 450 prophets. I'm just here by myself. You guys provide the bull. And, uh, and so, in verse 24, it says, And call ye on the name of your gods, and I'll call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves, and dress it first, for ye are many, and call on the name of of your gods, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock, which was given them, and they dressed it and called on the name of Baal from morning even till noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered, And they leapt upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them. And he said, Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he's talking, or he's pursuing, or he's on a journey, or peradventure he sleeps and must be awaked. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till all the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass when midday was past, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor any to answer, nor any that regard. So here these prophets are, these prophets of Baal, and they're making a big scene they're making a lot of noise they're crying out they're cutting themselves they got their own blood gushing out all over the place they they've jumped up and down they've done all of these theatrics and there's no answer nothing and see i believe the lord was showing me this if you look at what happened during the pandemic There were a lot of people making a lot of noise. You had politicians. You had doctors. You had other medical professionals. You had other legal professionals who who were all prophesying to us as to what's going to happen. How many people are going to die and and what's going to happen to the economy and and all of these things. They're being loud and obnoxious and and, and making a big fuss and, and they're wanting people to turn to them for the answer, but there were no answers. Just a bunch of noise. Nobody was answering. And see, there were people calling upon these uh, leaders and they were looking to them as their God. And they were looking to them for the answer. And they were caught between two opinions. And they're like, listen, somebody's got to know. Somebody must be God. Somebody must have the answer. And they're shouting and they're, 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 they're carrying on. And people are rioting. And <laughs> there's all this stuff happening. Just like here, these people, they're, when, when we read about, you know, what happened here, You might think, you know, there's a couple people doing all this. But no, there's 450 prophets of Baal. 
and they're cutting themselves and they're jumping up and down and they're crying out and they're, they're making a big to-do. But there's nothing. No answer. Verse 30 says, And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. These prophets of Baal had made all kinds of noise. They had made a mess. They jumped up and down. They destroyed the altar. And Elijah shows up and he says, All right now, everybody come close. This isn't just about me. I want you to see. I want you to see what God's going to do. And then he repairs the altar. And I believe the prophets of Baal have spoken. They've had their opportunity. They've jumped up and down. They've yelled. They've, they've given us their report. And now it's time for us to put things in order to repair the altar of the Lord. And you see, when, when Elijah repaired the altar, he put the stones in place according to the word of the Lord. He began to, to line things up with what God had said. It says, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came. Elijah said, I'm not, I'm not just going to pray a prayer unto God. No, I'm going to put things in place. I'm going to line things up. I'm going to put the word of God first place here. And I'm going to honor that which God has already spoken. And I'm going to put these 12 stones representing the word that the Lord has given to these tribes. I'm going to put things in order. See, a lot of times we just want God to come and fix it. We want to cry out and we want to say, God, come fix my mess. But see, I believe this is a time where we need to repair the altar of the Lord. It's a time, and, it, and it's been going on for quite a season now, where people, we, 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 we have to repair that which the damage has been done by the enemy, by, by, by the flesh, by the, the, the craziness that happened through this pandemic. We have to repair the altar of the Lord. There are people who stood in the name of God and said ridiculous, stupid things. And it's now a time for us to repair those things in our own hearts and in our own lives, in our own church, in our own family, in our own home. And get those things right and set them at, at the right place using those the word of God and honoring what God has said in our lives. And laying a new foundation or laying this, the, not a new foundation, but laying the foundation anew. And a fresh, with a fresh word from the Lord. And that's what Elijah did. He repaired the altar. And it says that he, he, he dug this big moat around it. You know, it wasn't necessary. What was he doing? He didn't have to do that. I mean, God is going to... Is it more impossible for the, the fire to ignite for 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 the the offering to ignite when it doesn't have the water on it or when it does have the water on it. I mean 
it, he wanted to make sure that there, none of this had to do with Elijah. See, that it wasn't going to be because of him. So he made this trench. And it says in verse 33, And he put the wood in order. And he cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, Fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, Do it the second time. And, he, and they did it the second time. And he said, Do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar, and it filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass, the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God of Israel. You see, he could have just called the fire down, but he wanted to make sure. There's no way that you're going to say that Elijah did this. There's no way you could say, well, maybe he sparked a couple of rocks together. Maybe he did something to cause this to happen. No, there'd be no flesh that's going to glory in what God is doing. You see, when we put ourselves out of it and say, this isn't going to be by my strength. This isn't by my might. This isn't something I'm going to conjure up. I'm going to make sure that it can't be by my strength. And see, Elijah, he poured that water over it. There was no way that there was anything he could do. There was nothing in his power to bring to pass what God was getting ready to do. So Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel. And that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord. Hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell, consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. And I believe we're at a moment in time. This was a very unique moment in time. When Elijah stood there on Mount Carmel, when he called upon the name of the Lord, this was a unique moment when the people of God were standing between two opinions. And I believe today we're at a unique moment. There are people who are standing between two opinions and they're trying, they can't decide who they're going to serve, which way, which direction they should go. And they're, they're, they're teetering and, they're, and their faith is watered down and they're wondering, well, maybe it's okay to have homosexuality in our church. Maybe it's okay to ordain these people who, who, who are homosexuals. Maybe it's okay to, to mix the worldliness in with the God because we got to reach a generation. But God is saying for those who will call upon Him, He will come with fire that will burn up all of the nonsense and get rid of all of that stuff that you thought might or might not be God. And He'll show you that He Himself is God. And He alone is is God. And this is a time, a day, and an hour when you and I have an opportunity to display to the world who our God is. And when we prepare an altar for Him, when we repair the altar that so many have, have desecrated, and we 
repair that altar in our life and we get our lives in line with the Word of God and we put ourselves on there as a sacrifice. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12 that we, that our lives should be a living sacrifice. And we can crawl up on that altar and give our all to Him knowing that He will answer with fire. And he'll consume everything that's not of him if we'll give it over to him. And I believe we're going to see a demonstration of God's power like Elijah saw. Like the people of Israel saw when Elijah called upon his God. Because it's a time where we as believers have an opportunity to call upon God. We've always had that opportunity. I understand that. But this is a time where the stage has been set. And there have been those who have called upon their leaders. And they've called upon their gods. But see, now you and I show up in the name of Jesus. And guess what? Corona has to bow. COVID has to flee. The problem that you've showed up with God shows up with the answer. And it's not because of anything I could do. It's not because of anything I could conjure up. But it's because my God is God. And He's going to show us with a demonstration of His power, the demonstration of fire, the demonstration of love, the demonstration of compassion and, and holiness where there be no question. You're either going to be following God or you're following Baal. Which one do you choose? You see, right now is a, is a critical time. It's a critical time in your life. And you can make a decision right now and just say, you know what? <laughs> you're right. I need God. I don't want the things of the world any longer. And I'm going to pray with you right now. And, and I'm inviting you to pray this prayer with me. And to really give up everything. Every part that's trusted in something other than God. Every part of you that's maybe through difficult times. It didn't have to be the pandemic, but we've all been through difficult times. In the last few years, because of the, the craziness that's going on in the world, it's been a stressful for many people. And people have turned to different things to relieve that stress. Some turn to alcohol, some turn to drugs, some turn to witchcraft, some turn to, to sex or to, to whatever it might be. Some turn to food, some turn to other things but see God wants us to turn to him lay all of those things down say yeah well I've got to eat or I'm going to die I get that <laughs> but you don't have to consume you don't have to be consumed with what you're going to eat you don't have to be consumed with uh, your daily life what the uh, Really, the Bible tells us that we don't even have to take a thought, that we're not supposed to take any thought saying, what shall I eat, what shall I wear, you know. But our trust is in Him. Because here's the thing, we look at the lily of the field, we look at the flowers, and we can see God clothed them. They don't have any faith at all. How much more? The love that He has for you, won't He take care of you? Of course He'll take care of you. You're his child. If you've made Jesus Lord of your life, you're his son, you're his daughter. And maybe today you're listening to this and you're saying, you know, I did make him Lord of my life, but I, I, I'm confused. I'm uncertain about the future. There's been a lot of craziness happen and I don't know what to do. Well, today you can make a decision that God is still God and that you're going to serve him. So let me pray with you. If you're listening today, you need to make Jesus Lord of your life. I want you to pray this prayer with me. If you're listening and, and you say, Jesus is Lord of my life, but I, I, I've really 
put my trust in other things. Pray this prayer with me. Let's get things right. Let's line ourselves up with the Word of God. Let's line our lives up with the Word of God. And let's prepare for the greatest move that we've that the earth has ever seen. The greatest move of God's Spirit. The manifestation of the sons of God. Hallelujah. So, Father, I just thank you for every person listening. First, I'm just going to pray a prayer over you. So first, I'm just going to pray a prayer over you, and then I'm going to lead you and ask you to join me in a prayer. So Heavenly Father, I pray for every person that's listening today. Everyone that has... Heavenly Father, I pray for every person that's listening today. I ask you, Father, to touch them. I ask you, Holy Spirit, to make yourself real to them. I pray, Father God, that you would show them. Some of them, maybe they've never even experienced your presence. I'm asking you right now, even as they're listening, Lord, just release your anointing into their life right now. Release your power and touch them. Let them experience your presence right now where they are. Touch them with your spirit. Now, you who are listening, I'm asking you to pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I believe that you sent Jesus to die as a sacrifice for my sin. And I repent of those things that I've done. And I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to save me. I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead. And I thank you for providing a Savior for me, Lord. So, Father, thank you for saving me. Thank you for causing me to be your child. Thank you, Lord, that I'm now called a son of God. Forgive me, Father, for putting my trust in anyone or anything other than you. And right now, I lay down all of those things before you. I lay down all of the crutches that I leaned on. And Lord, I'm asking you. I'm asking you to be the only thing that I depend upon, Lord. I'm asking you to help me to be completely, totally dependent on you. And Lord, I say it by faith right now. You're the only one I'm trusting in. I lay down all the other gods that I've had in my life. I lay down all the other answers that I thought might help. And Lord, I'm asking you, be the answer to the problems in my life. I'm trusting you with all that I have and all that I am. Lead me, guide me, and I will follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Listen, if you prayed that prayer with me today, and this is the first time you've prayed it, or it meant something to you, let me know. You can put it in the comments below. You can, you can find me on our website. I put the link below. BurningTruthAfrica.com. 
reach out. Let us know that you prayed this prayer today. Let us know that you've given yourself totally, completely to God. Until next time, God bless you. I love you. Bye-bye.